In this video, we're going to do some quick worked examples of adding, subtracting, multiplying and dividing fractions. Let's start with adding and subtracting. If we're adding or subtracting fractions, the denominators must be the same. So let's start with adding two fractions. Let's say we have now 1 over 5 and we want to add now to that 2 over 5. We can see this fraction has a numerator of 1 and a denominator of 5. This one a numerator of 2 and a denominator of 5. So they both have the same denominator. If that's the case, all I need to do is add the numerators. So 1 plus 2 is going to give me 3, so we'd end up now with 3 over 5. If you like to think of this as a pizza and it's split into 5 slices, if I have 1 slice and add it to 2 slices, I'm going to have 3 of the 5 slices. Let's have a look at subtracting fractions. If I have now 4 over 7 and I want to subtract from this now 2 over 7, we can see that the denominators are the same. They're both 7. So all I need to do is take 2 from 4. So 4 minus 2 is going to give me 2 and we end up now with 2 over 7. So when adding or subtracting fractions, the denominator must be the same. Now, if it's not the same, we can use equivalent fractions now to find a common denominator. So let's say we had now 1 over 4 plus now 3 over 8. What I want to do is add these fractions. I can only add them if I have a common denominator. I've got 1 over 4 and 3 over 8. So we can see now that the denominators are different. What I'm going to do is rewrite this as an equivalent fraction. I'm going to put this fraction in terms of eighths. If I've got 1 over 4, I'm going to have 2 over 8. So all I've done here is multiply the numerator by 2 and the denominator by 2 to get now an equivalent fraction that has the same denominator. So now I've got 2 over 8 plus 3 over 8, which is going to give me 5 over 8. We would do exactly the same now in terms of a technique with the denominator if we were subtracting. So for example now if I had 3 over 5 and I wanted to subtract from this now 1 over 10, what I would do here is just change this fraction into tenths. So I'd need to multiply the numerator by 2 which would give me 6, the denominator by 2 which would give me 10, we'd have now 6 over 10 minus 1 over 10 which would give me 5 over 10 which if we wanted we could go ahead and cancel and that would now give me 1 half. So we always look to cancel down. So all I've done in these two particular cases is change one of the fractions. So we've just now given an equivalent fraction. Sometimes we might need to change both. So if we look at another example, if I had now 1 half plus 1 third, we need a common denominator. And we look to see which is the first number that both 2 and 3 go into. The first number 2 and 3 both go into is 6. So if I change this into 6s, I need to multiply the numerator by 3 and the denominator by 3. So this is going to give me, as an equivalent fraction, 3 over 6. If I want to change this into 6s, I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by 2, and that will give me 2 over 6. So we have now the same denominator, 3 plus 2 is 5, so we end up with 5 over 6. So this time I've added two fractions that have different denominators by finding equivalent fractions. An alternative is to cross multiply. So you can multiply up by the 3 and up by the 2. I prefer using equivalent fractions as, for example, in this case, it's a lot easier than ending up now with 32 as the denominator and cancelling down. So equivalent fractions. So let's do another one. Let's say we had now 2 over 7 and then we're going to have now minus 1 over 3. So in this case now we need to find the lowest common multiple of 7 and 3. That's going to be 21. So what I'm going to do here is change this into 21s. So I need to multiply the numerator by 3 which will give me 6 and the denominator by 3, which will give me 21. I need to multiply the fraction here, which is going to give me now 7. I'm multiplying top and bottom by 7. So I have 7 over 21. If we do 6 minus 7, we're going to end up with minus 1 over 21. 
So as we can see, we could end up now with a negative answer. So all I've done is converted these now into fractions with a common denominator. Okay, so all we're doing here is just adding and subtracting fractions. If the denominators are the same, simply add the numerators if you're adding, subtract the numerators if you're subtracting. If now the fractions need changing to give a common denominator, just use equivalent fractions. If you end up now with 5 over 10, look to simplify. Clearly, with this one, we can't simplify any further. So let's do another one. Let's do now 2 over 5, and then we're going to have now minus 1 over 4. The first number 5 and 4 both go into is 20. So I'm going to multiply all of this fraction by 4 to put it into 20ths. That will be 8 over 20. I'm going to multiply all of this fraction by 5 to give me 20ths, and that will be 5 over 20. 8 minus 5 is 3, so we have 3 over 20, and that would be in its simplest form. There are no common factors for 3 of 3 and 20. If that was 2 over 20, then we could write it as 1 over 10. So that is adding and subtracting fractions. Let's look at multiplying. If we're multiplying fractions, multiplying is actually easier than adding and subtracting. We don't need a common denominator. So if we have 3 over 5 multiplied by 1 over 2, we multiply the numerators, which is going to give me 3 times 1, which is 3, and we multiply the denominators. We've got now 5 times by 2, which is 10. At this stage, we look to see if we can cancel down. You can see if this cancels beforehand, or you can cancel at the end. So if we had now 7 over 6, which is a top-heavy fraction, or vulgar fraction, if you like, or even improper, and then we multiply this by 3 over 4, we could look to cancel to begin with, or we could simply now multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators, and cancel afterwards. When I'm talking about cancelling, we could cancel the 6 and the 3 to make this 1 and 2. But of course you can do this at the end. So we've got now 21 in the numerator, and then in the denominator we've got now 24. I would look at that and say to myself, I can divide both of these by 3. If I did, that would now give me 7 over 8. So you're looking to break this down in its simplest form. As stated, what we could have done now is cancelled either vertically or diagonally. So I could have cancelled now the 3 with the 6, which would have given me here 1 and 2. 3 over 6 is 1 over 2. I could also cancel vertically if I wanted. So multiplying fractions. Let's do another one. Let's do now 2 over 9 multiplied by 3 over 5. We could cancel the 9 and the 3, or we could just go ahead multiply the numerators, which would give me 6, multiply the denominators, which would give me 45, and then say to ourselves, could we break this down? We can't half both of those, but both will divide by 3. So see if it divides by 2, see if it divides by 3. It divides by 3, so we'd have 2 over 15, and that's in its simplest form. OK, let's look at dividing. If we divide now, and let's just take two fractions, let's say we've got one quarter, and we divide this now by one third. What we do here is turn the second fraction round and multiply. This is the same as writing now 1 over 4 multiplied by 3 over 1. Then all we do is exactly the same as we've done here. 1 times by 3 is 3. 1 times by 4 or 4 times by 1 is 4. I like to use now TNT. We turn and times. So what we do is turn the second fraction upside down and multiply. So if we've got 5 over 4 divided now by 2 over 7, this is the same as 5 over 4 multiplied by 7 over 2. We can see now that 5 times by 7 gives me 35. 4 times by 2 is 8 and we can't simplify that fraction anymore. So we turn and times. If we look at another one, let's say we've got 3 over 4, and then we're going to divide this by 5 over 6. 
we would simply write 3 over 4 multiplied now by 6 over 5. We could at this stage cancel down. We mustn't cancel down now diagonally or vertically if we're dividing. We would need to turn it first. And that's why I think cancelling at the end is going to be easier. So we're going to have 18 over 20. That's 6 times 3 and 5 times 4. And we could cancel this down. We could divide both of these now by 2. And that would give me 9 over 10. So there we go, some basic work with adding, subtracting, multiplying and dividing fractions. When you're adding or subtracting, the denominators must be the same. When you're multiplying or dividing, they don't. You just follow the simple procedures like so.